The 2002 to 2005 Ford Explorer is often referred to as the third generation Ford Explorer. Behind me, I have a 2003 Ford Explorer here. It happens to be a centennial edition, which commemorated a hundred years of Ford making uh, vehicles. And uh, it has a few unique features because of that. You could get these Ford Explorers in all different types of configurations from the most basic uh, two-wheel drive, six-cylinder, five-seater model in cloth to a fully decked out V8 all-wheel drive with leather. Uh, the one I have here is a fully decked out uh, high-end Ford Explorer model. I'll go over some of the features you can expect to find in these type of Explorers. I've also done quite a few modifications and I'll go over those modifications with you and show you what's possible on your Ford Explorer. The first thing that you're going to notice about this Explorer is it has a more aggressive stance. That's because I installed a 3-inch level kit by BTF Fab. It has a 3-inch uh, spacer in the front along with these upper control arms uh, with this heavy-duty upper ball joint. And that uh, allows this to be lifted about 3 inches in the front and 2 in the rear, which gives it a leveled look. I paired that up with these fuel crush wheels, negative 12 offset, and these Goodyear Wrangler MTRs in the 265-7017. That's about a 31 and a half inch tire. I had to trim just a little bit back here. That's the only place that I trimmed. Uh, it rubs just a little bit right up in here, but it's not enough for me to worry about. And that negative 12 offset gives it a nice aggressive look. It sticks out just a little bit, um, but not enough where it's going to be throwing uh, uh, rain and mud all over your vehicle. Uh, I don't really recommend going with a bigger lift on this vehicle. You can put a body lift on it and try to fit larger tires. But for me, this is just a really nice look. And I think that it's a properly sized uh, lift and tire setup for this vehicle. I think if you went with a bigger tire size, it'd put too much strain on the vehicle. That's my opinion. Uh, so, you know, that's the lift I went with and I'm very happy with it. Now, because this vehicle is an all wheel drive, I have to keep the same tire size uh, and I couldn't fit the larger tire and the rim. I went ahead and added this uh, rear tire mount carrier by Rig Supply. It just mounts up to your hitch in the back. Pretty simple. It's pretty common to see these on like four runners and things like that mounted up with no problems. And uh, this is where my spare tire is. Normally your spare tire is going to fit underneath the vehicle there, but because this is a larger tire size, it wouldn't fit properly. And I went ahead and added this on. Plus I think it gives it a nice little extra off-road overland look that you're not going to see on too many other vehicles. The first thing that you're going to notice up front here is this light bar. It's a 20 inch four-wheel drive king light bar. I went ahead and just cut out the vents in that were there. I mounted it to the top half. The only thing that is behind that that needs cooling is the transmission cooler. Uh, which is important, but it seems like there's enough air that still spits through there that it isn't an issue. And it gives this a really nice aggressive look and it just fits in there really nicely. And so I'm happy with that install and its performance. It wasn't too difficult and it gives this Explorer a really nice look. These Explorers typically didn't come with tow hooks, but they have the mounting capability for these tow hooks. If you just go to your junkyard and find a pair of these tow hooks from a similar generation Ford F-150 or Excursion, um, they just mount right up. Um, so I went ahead and added those to the Explorer. I think it gives it a nice, nice look in the front for the aggressive off-road look and also gives me a lot of capability if I'm off-road getting pulled out and knowing that I have some solid anchors to mount to. You can see that this is what the tire mount uh, carrier looks like when you swing it open, giving you full access to the rear half of the vehicle here. Now, commonly on these Explorers, this trim piece right along here is gonna be cracked. It's 
pretty common on these vehicles. Pretty much everyone I see that is cracked. They're not that expensive to get. I went ahead and just replaced mine. I used the SEM trim black, flat uh, black to paint this before I put it on. And it looks pretty slick, I think, in that contrast of color um, with the flat black and then the gloss on the paint. I just used some 30 pound tape to attach it and it's been working really well for me. Another piece that's common to go bad on these Explorers is this rear tailgate piece. I went ahead and ordered one of these off of eBay and installed it. I actually didn't paint this, I just installed it the way that it came. Um, but it's got an extra bracket underneath here that keeps it from cracking again. And I'm happy uh, with that. I used the SEM trim black, flat black, all on the trim on this vehicle, all throughout the trim. On this back half here, usually those are faded. I went ahead and painted that. And I used it all along the trim as well. You can see that it gives it a nice clean look. And I'm happy with the results on that SEM trim black. You can see that this is the V8 all-wheel drive version. It's a 4.6 liter V8, and I'll show you what that looks like. The 4.6 liter V8 was a common V8 engine that Ford used across its vehicle line. These Ford Explorers came with either the 4.6 liter or the 4.0 liter V6. And the V8 4.6 liter has plenty of power for this vehicle. It's not lacking for power and I'm pretty happy with it. This, this engine has been replaced with a Jasper rebuilt 4.6 liter because I lost oil pressure on it and I had to replace it. But overall, this engine has more than enough power for this vehicle's needs. You can see here on my model, I don't have any switches for the four wheel drive over here. Uh, some of the all wheel drive models came with switches to turn on and off the four wheel drive. Uh, and you can do like a brown wire mod. Mine doesn't have that. It's all wheel drive all of the time. And I haven't had any issues with it. I'm happy with the performance of the all wheel drive system so far. Um, you can see that I did add the light switch for my front light bar there. It's a nice clean install for the switch there. And there's other spots to add other accessories if I'd like to. Because this vehicle is a Centennial Edition, it has that unique black paint job with the chrome roof rack, which identifies this uniquely as a Centennial Edition. It also has these unique badges both on the back and on the sides that commemorate it as a Centennial Edition. This Centennial Edition also has some unique leather seats with the same branding as Centennial Edition. And it also has a nicer stitched uh, center console uh, section here than most Explorers that you'll see. And that kind of separates it as a Centennial model. One of the reasons I selected this vehicle is because it came with seven seats. And I like the configuration of having the seven seat capability as well as um, just the smaller size of this vehicle. You can see that the leather on this vehicle is pretty nice. Uh, you could get these vehicles in all different types of configurations, including cloth, five seaters. This one's gonna be the fully um, you know, upgraded version. It's got heated seats. It's got the lumbar support, power forward and back, and then the manual. Um, backrest portion. Operating the seats on these uh, seven seater model is pretty easy. You just hit that section, they fall right down, and you have access to the back seated portion of the vehicle. One of the issues on these vehicles is that uh, this, this uh, latch to do the center console uh, portion of that middle seat pretty much always comes undone right here. Pretty much every model I've seen uh, at the junkyard has the same issue. This vehicle has a relatively small footprint, but it's still got a lot of space. You can see with that back seat lifted up, I can still fit quite a few things in the back there, a case of water, some other things. And then if I push this seat down, it opens up to a nice space. Uh, I think that this was a really functional idea to have this space. You can slide that forward 
and you've got a lot of functional space to work with. That's one of the reasons I really like this vehicle is all of this flexibility. The way Ford designed these Explorers is that you could either open just the hatch section with the glass up top here, or you could redo the entire tailgate. To uh, release the entire tailgate, there's a level lever here. And to release just the hatch, there's an electronic button that you push there and it releases. Kind of the technology on this vehicle, uh, as far as displays go, is just all right down here. You can see I have the miles there. And then if I hit the info button, it'll switch through. It'll tell me uh, how many miles I have on my trip. I can reset that here by holding down the reset button. It'll set it back to zero. I can also look at how many miles until empty. I'm currently getting 14.2 miles per gallon with these larger tires and the lift. I would say it's more like 12 miles per gallon when I'm driving around the city. I just happened to be on the freeway and got a little bit better mileage. And then you can check your time. The other thing is, is if you notice, it's got this um, direction indicator. It says that I'm headed southwest. Uh, that is controlled by this little box up here. A lot of times people wonder, what is this box all about? Well, that box is what tells the car what direction you are headed. And it's all just for that little section right there that tells you that you're headed southwest. On the gauge cluster here, uh, you can see that you've got your fuel gauge here. You've got your water temperature gauge here, your RPM gauge here, mile per hour, battery, and oil pressure. Pretty basic display for this Ford Explorer. When you come down to your steering wheel here, you have your cruise control settings on this side, and then you've got different controls for your climate control here and also your radio here. These Explorers came with a range of different types of climate control system. This one's gonna be the most complicated one that they came with, dual climate control system. Uh, you can choose on the driver's and passenger's side different temperatures. You also can set it auto for front and rear. Um, and it's also got climate control in the rear that your rear passengers can control as well. So this is the most sophisticated setup that you could get in this Ford Explorer. You can see back in 2003, this was the premium stereo system you could get. It's got AM, FM, six CD changer, and it also connects to the video system in the back. Now I've kept this stock because if you change it with a aftermarket stereo, it's not gonna connect to your DVD player in the back. And I like the DVD player because my kids like that and it comes in handy on long trips. You can see that the rear passengers here also can control their climate control in the rear. And also it comes with this DVD flip down player here. This has come in really handy. My kids really like it. Uh, I'm able to control the sound from up front and the sound is really good uh, because this has the upgraded stereo system with subwoofer in the back and the, uh, the DVD player works really well. One of the options that Ford offered on their vehicle in this generation was this external control. So if you know your code, you can just type it in and uh, get access to your vehicle if you happen to lock your keys in the vehicle or if you just want to get in the vehicle without your keys. Now, of course, I didn't know the code to my external door lock system. So what I had to do was I had to go and remove these panels and back behind here, there's a piece that will have the number for your um, external door lock printed on it. Uh, this is also where the subwoofer is housed and that subwoofer bumps pretty hard in this vehicle. I've been pretty impressed with it. This headlight system that I have on this Explorer is pretty advanced. You can see that you've got the dimmer for the dash there, and you can also see that I have the auto headlights that'll come on their own as well as other settings. One thing that I didn't know though is I've got the uh, fog lights on this. To engage the fog lights, you pull out, and now your fog lights are engaged.
on the driver's door here, pretty basic stuff. You can control your uh, mirrors here um, on this model. And it's also got your basic features, lock and unlock uh, control uh, for the windows and also the child control for the windows. Ford used this key fob for this generation vehicle. You can see that it has the lock and the unlock feature. It's got the, it's got the panic feature and then also the trunk pop feature. These are easy to buy and get programmed for this vehicle and I think are a nice little feature to have on this older 2003 model. This 2003 Ford Explorer is about as upgraded as you can get on one of these Explorers. The only feature it doesn't have that was available was a uh, sunroof. Uh, unfortunately, this one doesn't have that. But this is still a pretty nice vehicle for what it is. I like the size and the features you get for this year. And plus, you can pick up these Explorers pretty inexpensively. Now, I've had to replace the motor and transmission on this vehicle. I've obviously put a lot of money into the suspension as well as the wheels and tires. So I've got a lot invested in this vehicle. If I was going to build a off-road vehicle, I probably would choose something different. This is kind of a light duty off-road vehicle. I would take it maybe on some light trails, but I wouldn't get too crazy with it. I don't think that it is capable of handling some serious off-road situations. I like the configuration on this Ford Explorer. I like that it has a small footprint. Even with the lift on it, I can still fit it in most metropolitan parking garages and parking spaces. But it has those seven seats and that rear entertainment package that comes in handy for when I'm driving around with my kids or taking long trips. If I was gonna purchase another SUV, um, I probably would purchase one that had a bit more off-road capability. I feel like this Explorer is a light off-road vehicle. I don't feel like I could really hammer on it without breaking something. I think this is kind of a light duty off-road vehicle. Uh, but I do like the features, I like the configuration, I like the size, I like the fact that you can go to any junkyard in the U.S. and find plenty of replacement parts for this vehicle. There's a plethora of Explorers out there. It was the number one selling vehicle in its year. Um, and I like that I can upgrade it for relatively cheaply. Now you can pick up these Explorers for pretty cheap. I purchased this one with about 140,000 miles on it for $3,300. Now, of course, I have a lot more money into that. I replaced uh, the engine, the transmission, added the wheels and tires and the suspension. And I also, you know, replaced a lot of other parts on this vehicle. So I probably have about $25,000 total into this vehicle, which is more than I want to have into it. But overall, pretty happy with the vehicle and plan to get several years of use out of it.